Hello and welcome to episode four of the master class. My name is Cam and as always I'm here with my good friend Dave. Dave, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. It's uh, always a uh, highlight of my week to get together with you to do this. So Yeah, highlight of my bye week. <laughs> Uh, so episode four, this is, uh, we've made it to four. I don't, I don't know if that's a milestone, but we're going to count it as one. <laughs> uh, it's pretty exciting. Um, so we're here in our makeshift recording studio. Uh, if things sound differently this week, don't worry, it's not you, it's us. We've changed a few things around to hopefully um, make this a bit of a more enjoyable listening experience. Uh, my voice is still the same though, so I can't really change that. I was not blessed with a radio voice. So we're going to dive into follow-up, I guess. Is that right, Dave? That's, uh, yes, I think that's where we'll begin. All right, so a few of the follow-up things that we received uh, from a couple people is that apparently I speak much quieter than Dave, and I've been asked multiple times, is he sitting closer to you? What's in, in, in reality, Dave is actually twice as far from the microphone as I am. Uh, he just happens to have a voice that seems to uh, cut through all of the other noise, and I do not. So I will uh, hopefully speak more clearly and loudly. Um, but yes, thank you for that feedback. It's very important because we do want to be understandable and clear. We want to make this easy to listen to. Um, and some of our other follow-up has just been um, people letting us know that they enjoy the show, that they like it, that they are you know encouraged by it. And that's, I mean, more than anything else kind of blows us away yeah right? exactly uh you know we're not we don't claim to have any we're not special <laughs> other than we're you know we're just unique people that god has made um we don't claim to know everything have all the answers or anything like that but it's just it's it still blows our mind that people listen and that people listen and like it like that is just super awesome and and it makes us feel really good and just kind of helps us to you know push on and, and really know like okay maybe maybe god is going to use um or has used this already um despite our shortcomings and that's just makes me feel good i don't know what about you dave i would echo those sentiments um i i too am absolutely just floored that uh people will take time to listen to us and us talking about god but he is god and he's worth talking about and he's worth listening about so We'll give him the credit for anybody that uh, gains anything from the time that we spend here. Definitely. All right. Well, that's about it for follow-up this week. Now, Dave, yes, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this, is, this is my fun game every time. Uh, if people wanted to follow up with us, how might they do so? Uh, that's a good question. How would they? Um, you know what? That's a very aware of my... Yeah, I've, I've got it. I'm 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 aware. I'm very aware of my ums now. So I, that that is one of the things that, uh, as we do this, I want to be more conscious of not saying um when I'm trying to think of my next thought. Uh, there's uh, quite a few different places that uh, people can uh, do follow up with us. Uh, one is on Twitter, and that's at Masterclass FM. Uh, we'd love to hear from you there. Uh, Cam and I were talking uh, tonight that uh, I don't even know what it is. Is it your handle on Twitter? Your ID? Yeah, What's... your your Twitter handle. <laughs> Twitter handle. Yeah, I think I should know that. But <laughs> my yes. my Twitter name. It, uh, you 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 may have seen that it's at Cam Brennan. Uh, that's mine. That's not yours. No, that's that would is, be. Is it is it Cam Brennan? Yeah, okay. that would be a cruel trick if your Twitter <laughs> name was at Cam Brennan. I would feel totally robbed. But mine is at. 108 HBO, so T E N number eight HBO, and I was sharing with Cam tonight that uh, that was a uh, term that we use at the police department for clearing a call that the officer handled. So it is 108 back in service. HBO is handled by officers. So if you should stumble upon mine as you're looking at the master class, that that's what that is all about. Uh, additionally, you can reach us by uh, email at uh, masterclassfm at gmail.com. And then um, all of our show notes are kept on our website. And uh, the web page uh, that we use is masterclassfm.com. Uh, for this particular show, you would say 
And is it backslash? Is that what it is? It forward slash? Anyway, slash. <laughs> Master class <laughs> slash four. It's going to be a forward slash. A forward slash. All right. Yeah, right I've never. Below the question mark on your keyboard. I've never really learned which is a forward slash and which is a is a back class, a backward uh, slash. So, masterclassfm.com. You can go there and you can find our show notes. So that those are all the different ways that you can yes. get a hold of us and give us feedback. And we would love to hear from you, even if it's not necessarily positive, or <laughs> um, if it if you have um, questions about some of the things that we're saying. Uh, one of we challenges. We love questions. We love questions. Challenge us in our faith and, and what we believe and what it is that we're saying because um, I think that's how you grow. I think you, again, it's it's one of the themes that uh, seems to be at the forefront prevalent in my walk with him right now is just that sense of I believe that Christianity is a thinking faith and that questions are good and that challenging what you believe is good and even letting God know that, hey, I'm, I'm frustrated with you. I want you to reveal yourself to me, or I don't understand why you could let bad bad things happen to good people. Uh, he's a big God, and he's willing to take that stuff on. So, um, And if he should choose to use me or Cam to kind of deal with some of those things and, and dialogue with those of you out there that are listening, um, we'd love... We'd love, we'd be honored to be a part of that, uh, that conversation and that, that questioning. So definitely now we have a lot of questions to get through. Today. Okay. But before we get to those questions, we should probably read the text and I think I'll take the honors this week. That would be wonderful. All right. So this week we are continuing on in Matthew chapter five and we will be reading or, uh, discussing as well, uh, verses 13 through 16, and uh, I read from the ESV, um, Dave reads from the NIV, um, just because, Re- <laughs> reasons, the we- reasons, that there's no other than just reasons. Um, so here we go. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under, trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people put a light... uh, Oh my gosh. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Next week, Dave will be back on Bible reading duty, because apparently I can't (laughs) can't do that. (laughs) Alright, so... There's that. Let's just take that first part uh and let me ask you this dave what does it mean to be salt the age-old question (laughs) i i think in its um simplest answer or basic answer when i think about what does it mean to be salt it is to have an influence over something um Over <laughs> why is that? <laughs> no, I, I that I hadn't thought about it in that way before, but that that word kind of encompasses perfectly what I was thinking. So sorry. No, I'll good. get I'll get to that later. Go ahead. And I think there's that element of you know in Jesus' day when he was talking to his audience, would they have had a different different perspective on what salt was? Than, than possibly what we would have today. And I, and I think that's definitely true. Mm-hmm. Um, I think everybody would be familiar with the fact that salt would have been a preservative, which would have been essential in a day and an age when um, refrigeration wasn't available and yeah. you had to, to preserve things. And uh, salt was even uh, treated as, as a, a currency. You know, it, it held value like silver or gold, um, something, you know, an inherent value in and of itself, which... Today, I don't. I don't think that is the case. You know, it's you. I, well, I'll, I'll admit a sin here. When I was in college, I never paid for salt. I would steal it from Burger King or. Uh, is it really stealing though? <laughs> if it's just sitting out in the open. <laughs> Moral dilemma of the episode. 
So statute just, of limitations. Yeah. Is so I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not sweating too much. Did but, you go to Burger King just to steal the salt, or no, would you buy was, food and then just take a handful of salt packets with you? No, I'm talking like I'd take the little plastic oh, shakers. Oh yeah, that's definitely yeah, uh, that's burglary <laughs> or whatever. Theft, yeah, yeah. No, and and uh, so yeah, so never paid for salt in college because. I would steal the, the little white plastic salt shaker from wherever it was that I was eating until I needed another one. Then I'd go steal another one. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> uh, um, and so, now you're a police officer. Yes, oh, exactly. Irony. Oh, the irony. <laughs> but so, so there, there, there is that element of, um, you know, salt to us is different than it was in what people would have understood it to have been in Jesus' day. But the reality is, is that it is still essential to life. Um, I believe that, um, well, when, when you go get your Gatorade and you're drinking your electrolytes, that's, that's ultimately what you're trying to replace is your, mm-hmm. that, you know, your, 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 your sweat is salty. And so, um, for your, your brain to fire correctly, for your muscles to operate correctly, you have to have that proper, the salt, the sodium, uh, in your body. Um, so for all that aside, salt inflate enhances the flavor of anything that you put it on. Um, and so I think that is kind of that, whether it be a preservative as it was in Jesus day, which has a lot of different implications to that, or whether it be something that enhances something by its nature. Uh, Mm -hmm. if you, if you use a correct amount of salt, you don't taste the salt. The salt actually brings out the natural. You know, you put salt in sweet cookies because it makes cookies taste better. They're salted. Salted chocolate caramel. <laughs> That's where it's at. Um, so, what does it mean to be salt? Um, I definitely, again, back to my original statement. It's it's to be an influence, and I think it's to be a positive influence. And then you can take it a whole bunch of different levels of: Am I adding flavor to the world? To mm. Am I, well, maybe not even, yeah, I guess it is, because it's calling us to be, to be the salt. Uh, I still think that's a, a, a salt in that we don't do it in and of ourselves, but we are dependent on Jesus and God for that, to, you know, the idea of salt being a preservative, um, that there's just this element of salt has so many different uses. It definitely has value, and uh, I think it, on its, on, on a very basic level, it enhances things by making them better, whether preservative taste, um, your driveway when it's icy, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know, did I, did I answer your question today? Yeah, uh, and and I have a few um, responses to you. Okay. Uh, I, I reacted to the word influence because I've been searching for a term that kind of encapsulated everything that you just said, the, the preservative, the flavor, the enhancing, all that stuff. I was like, I was like, why did I think of that? I like words. I, I, you know, I like to think that I'm decent with them. But I was struggling with trying to find a word that kind of encompassed that whole idea that you just presented. And I think influence is definitely um, a very good option for that. Yes. Um, now, I, I want to kind of take a different tack to this whole salt thing and just kind of go very literal um, to what um, this, the text says, uh, if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? Can, can it be? <laughs> and it says it's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. So I read that and, and without diving into the whole, well, the different uses for salt and which I think is a valid and worthwhile, um, thought process to go through. What is what does salt mean, and and what are the different ways that this metaphor might be, you know, applied, especially today, um, in a world that's less and less Christian? Um, and I think those are very worthwhile thoughts to have. But I, I kind of took the opposite approach and was like, okay, Jesus is saying that salt has a specific purpose, and if it doesn't fulfill that purpose, what good is it? Yeah, right. Nothing. People are gonna walk on it. That. It's going gonna, it's gonna to serve to add some friction to their footsteps so they don't slip in the mud. Because yeah. <laughs> the salt is going to suck up, like, you know, the pig juices and all the other gross <laughs> stuff that was in the streets back then. And so I just thought, okay, if, we, if he's calling us the salt of the world, 
And he says that salt has a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't meet that specific purpose, it's useless. Well, then isn't he sort of implying that as Christians, as the salt of the earth, we have a specific purpose to fulfill that if we don't do, we have no, you know, like it's pointless. And and, and that might be a little more um, of a downer <laughs> mm -hmm. um, to think about, but... I just thought, well, if salt has a specific purpose and we are to be salt to the earth, then we are to have a specific purpose. And I thought to myself, well, what is our specific purpose as children of God? Whether, you know, sons, daughters, uh, as the body of Christ to the rest of the world, what is our purpose as human beings um, in God's family? And so I went to the uh, Westminster Catechism. And the very first question <laughs> in the Catechism is, what is the chief end of man? I.e., what is our purpose? Why are we here? Right. And it says, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And I thought, okay, well, that might possibly answer the question, what is to be, what does it mean to be the salt of the earth? What If we have one purpose, what is our purpose? To glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Am I making any sense, Dave? Yes. I the the piece that I would add or that I would ask is what um what uh well back to the I guess our word how does how does that boy I'm I'm <laughs> at a loss for how I want to articulate this. Um so no, I I agree with what you were saying. Um how does that then, because I think, I think there's an element here of, boy, you've kind of, you, you've challenged me, I guess is what I'm going to say, because I want to, I want to sound smart and I want to sound like <laughs> I have uh, a good answer for you, this. You do sound smart, Dave, don't worry. Um, but I, I, I guess I'll just leave it as I'm somewhat, I'm stumped maybe and go back to the. <laughs> it only took four episodes, folks. <laughs> And, and and go back to, um, oh, I don't even know what I was going to say now. Um, that it is probably, I, I will say this, your question and what you're saying and what you've presented here is, is making me think that it is even simpler than what I want to make it. Because I want to make it, I want to make it complicated. I want to mm -hmm. make it hard. I want to sound smart. I want to sound like there's just all this other thing things that go with it and i just even you answering that question and bringing that forward makes me go it is probably a lot simpler than what i want to make it yeah and, and dave is is very much foreshadowing the uh the questions later on in the show which is totally cool um <laughs> but i i just i mean hmm. see now i'm the one that's stumped i will i will venture to say that I have come, I have come to the conclusion at this point in my life, and I'm willing to be convinced otherwise, that we make faith in God much more difficult, or um, meandering is the word that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. jumping through hoops than it was ever intended to be. Yes. Um, the chief end of man is not to read your Bible every day, go to four Bible studies, be an elder at church, and uh, coach your little league, your kids' little league team, you know, and name them the Crusaders. Because, yes. you know, like, <laughs> the, the chief end of, of man, uh, what God created us to be is not what... Um, our current society says a Christian should be. Um, and that's not to say that the church urging men to take up leadership roles in their family is a bad thing or uh, that we should serve our communities a bit. Not Those are great things. We need dads that give a crap. Mm -hmm. We need dads that acknowledge their children and love their wives um, and, and all of that. And we need... Um, 
churches that are serving the community, meeting physical needs and spiritual needs, and are bringing the gospel in tangible ways to the people. There, I mean, that's what the church's purpose is. But as an individual, you know, 28-year-old son of God who's trying to figure out what life is, it's so easy for me to say, well, my purpose is to do these 95 things. When in reality, God created me so that I might worship and love him, right? Glorify yes. God and enjoy him forever. That's yes. all. Everything else is probably coming from my guilt, my uh, feelings of um, inadequacy, the sin that I have in my life, right? Telling me, no, you're not good enough. You need to do more. You need to earn it. You know, because everything we do in this life mm -hmm. is based on Yes. achievement right our grades whether or not we make the basketball team um whether or not we get a girlfriend like how can i prove my worth to these people so that they're going to choose me and validate me for what i am um you know even like getting in the worship band at church well are you good enough to play it's a you know and and that that you know i'm not trying to speak for all churches there because there are plenty of churches that that don't do that which is great but um it's such an inherent um, reaction for us to be like, okay, how? what can I do to at least feel like I belong yes. with God? And and I just, you know, I come back to that answer. Our chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him. That's it. I mean, and from that will stem other things. Like if I'm glorifying God and enjoying His presence and, and, and relishing that relationship the way that I should be, I'm going to want to serve. I'm going to want to share the gospel. I'm going to want to be a good husband and hopefully one day a good father. Like, I'm going to want to do those things because I am close with God. But those things aren't earning me any more credit with God. Like, Christ earned all the credit I could ever need. <laughs> yes. And that's such a hard thing for me to grasp because I know the depth of my screw my screw ups like i know me better than anybody else on the planet better than my wife better than my parents who raised me and have seen me make countless mistakes um what, what they what they can't see is only what me and god can see and that's what's in here and what's yeah. in, you know in my brain and, and in my heart um and so for me it's almost like at a point, it does seem like too easy to go, oh, just glorify God and enjoy him forever. Like, because that's easy, right? <laughs> uh, but at the same time, it's almost kind of like a burden has been lifted. Like, okay, if I if I really just kind of learn what that means, and it's kind of hard to recalibrate after so many years. You know, I grew up in the church. My parents both worked for it. Like, I've seen all of the ugliness that the church can produce at a very young age. So trying to recalibrate myself to, like, this mm -hmm. is just, like, working through years and years and years of bad habits. And that's really hard. Right. Um, so I just, I really kind of latched onto that today. I was like, or not today, this, this these past two weeks as I've, I've been thinking about and getting ready for this episode is just, man if my purpose is to do this and if I don't do this, I'm just going to get tossed out to get trampled on. Like I better pay attention. Like th th this is some serious, you know, he's making a very clear point, at least to me, you have a purpose as a son of God. Seek out that purpose. Otherwise, what's the point? Yes. So end of soapbox. <laughs> well, and that's, I, I think that's even what I, when you initially had asked the question of, that's what I wanted to do is I wanted to make that connection of um, going back to the influence and having an impact on the world is I wanted to, to add this piece of it of what is the chief end of man uh, is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And then I, I did, I wanted to add that second piece of which will allow you to have your influence over your world because you are the salt and that, but I, that second piece is irrelevant. It's not necessary. I don't, yeah, because I think it stands alone. Our, our our purpose is to enjoy God and to do to enjoy Him forever. And um, is it possible to kind of 
um, be in that. And and, uh, I think one of the toughest things for any of us to do would be for God to tell you, all I want you to do, all I really want you to do is enjoy me and spend time with me. You know, it, it just would be like, but, but, but there's all these other things that I need to do, or there's all these other ways that I could have an influence. And, um, the reality is, is God is fully aware of everything that's going on in this world. Mm-hmm. Uh, he can handle it <laughs> just fine on his own without any help from us. Uh, so it, it is, it's, there's that element of, and I'll, I'll speak for myself of, I feel like I have to be doing something. I have to be contributing. I have to be having an influence. I want to have a positive influence. I want, um, and that is just, it's very, very difficult to simply, to simply rest on that. Yeah, it it just, it, it seems counterintuitive. You know, especially like if you compare, um, Christianity with with other major religions in the world you know Christianity is the only the only one where God chose to come to earth and chose to live among us and chose to to die for us the only religion where we don't have to earn anything Mm -hmm. our sins are not weighed on a scale against our goods um our our sin our 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 sinful condition is is totally brought upon by us in our salvation is totally brought upon by God the two do not (laughs) Yes. And there's no other... And that's that's the distinction. One of the many, but the main distinction between Christianity and, and other faiths is we have no part in our salvation. We, we have no part. No. Um, and it's, it's so hard um, to understand that that part of it and, and you know we could we could go down the whole catholic protestant trail right now and, and i don't really feel like we need to do that <laughs> this episode um but it just i think that's something that perhaps maybe we should just kind of sit on for the next couple of weeks is just what does that mean for me or for whoever's listening what does it mean for you to glorify god and enjoy him like what does that look like in your your town, your home, your family, your job. Um, I think that's certainly worth some deep contemplation uh, moving forward. Any other thoughts before we move on, Dave? I No, I All have right. nothing more. Well, I'm sure I have more, but I'm, I'm going to uh, stay with our simple <laughs> element that we came down to. All right, so... Uh, these verses uh, make some very obvious statements. They're kind of like no dust statements, right? Uh, salt is only good when it's salt. Uh, city on a hill can't be hidden. Duh, it's at the top of a hill. It's bright. It's it's not meant to be hidden. And lamps aren't meant to be covered, right? They serve one purpose, to light up the darkness so you can see and not step on little toys or dog bones in the middle <laughs> of the night and say bad things. So, what should be obvious about our relationship with God? If we are to be a city on a hill, the salt of the earth, a lamp that is light into the darkness, what should be obvious about us and about our relationship with God? And this is where, I I, I don't know, maybe it releases the tension for me of where, what I wanted to have with our previous of being the salt... Because I, I do think there is an element here of um, our life should be a reflection of what God is doing in it, what Christ is doing in it. So this is kind of that place where uh, because we've been with him, uh, because we are seeking him, uh, because we have had our sins forgiven, because we have a sense of eternal life and that our, our names are written in the book of life and that we have done nothing to deserve that, uh, there should be um, something different about us. Now that's probably again where the the the, the rub is going to be, where the tension is going to be with what uh, we're talking about, because something different about us. I want to do something. I want to behave a certain way so that people know that I'm a Christian. I want to be 
uh, he's the cop that doesn't cuss. He's the, you know, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. I want it to be about um, do's and don'ts. I want it to be about uh, focusing on my actions where I believe, again, it's simpler than what we make it. If we have been with him, uh, we are going to reflect him. And it's not up to us to make that happen. It should be a natural consequence, a natural outflowing of um, him being present in our life. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if this falls short, but the, the moon reflects, you know, the light of the sun. Mm -hmm. And that's, well, it's not all it does, but that's how we see it. That's how we know it is because it is reflecting uh, the light of the sun and... I think that is truly what we need to be doing is, is reflecting, uh, uh, God's, uh, presence in our life. And, uh, going back to what, uh, we were talking about, uh, last week, uh, beatitudes versus even the fruits of the spirit of hopefully we will see those things. We will see the love and the joy and the peace and patience and faithfulness and, and self-control. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure. We're going to mess up. We're not always going to be perfect in that. But I think, I, I believe people will go, no, that person, there's something different about how they're dealing with this this situation or why they're making the choices that they're making um, as a result of, of um, relationship with him. So, uh, so, yeah, I think that the reflection of the light, maybe there is a little bit more of that um, to it than... than uh, <clears throat> what we landed on with the with the purpose of salt. Mm -hmm. um, when I was reading um, these last couple weeks, um, just these passage, kind of trying to over and over and over again, um, I I came across um, a few related passages of scripture that I thought, um, at least to me, helped me kind of get a better understanding of what was going on. Um, and the first one is Revelation chapter 3. Um, don't worry, we're not going to get all end timesy on you here. Um, there's other good stuff in Revelation besides the four horsemen and all of that stuff. Um, but it's verses 14 through 22. Um, and it says, and the angel of the church in Laodicea, or sorry, into the angel of the church in Laodicea, right? The words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you were lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need, and I need nothing. Not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich in white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. To uh, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, and I also, uh, as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit ha says to the churches. And, you know, the, the question, what should be obvious about our relationship with God, is that our relationship with God should be obvious. To the, and that kind of gets to what you were saying. There should be something different. There should be something noticeable, whether it's the way that we conduct ourselves, we treat people, the conversations that we purposely have. Um... So you are neither hot nor cold. Would that you were either one. Just be hot or cold. Don't be lukewarm. I'm going to spit you out. You ever had like food at a restaurant and you take a bite and it's just like, <laughs> it's not hot. And it, like it's supposed to be hot and it's not hot. And it's just kind of like lukewarm. You know, it's been sitting there for a while and it's just yes. like gross, especially if it's like fish or something. It's supposed <laughs> to be hot and it's just like a little bit warm and you, you just kind of want to spit it out because you're not sure if you're going to get like salmonella or <laughs> food poisoning or whatever. That's kind of what I thought. And, and um, to me, it was like a city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Don't put your lamp under a basket. Like be okay. Right. With what God yes. has made you. Do. Like if, if you are trying to hide the, uh, 
the gospel, if you were if you were trying to uh, fit in with those around you because they're not Christians and you don't want to be that guy and you're trying to hide the gift that God has given you, like what I, what's the point? You know, and, and I hate these, uh, you don't put like a flashlight inside your jacket when you're trying to find your way in the dark just because you don't want someone to see you. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, to me, it's like the way that God has structured the world, the way that we work, the way that, that he has chosen to um, set out the story of mankind. It's like he's he's given us two options. Either you you believe what the bible says and you go for it or you don't like in a lot of modern american churches try and find this like happy medium and it and it and it doesn't work it just flies in the face of what scripture says you know and so when when I when I wrote this question like what should be obvious about like I didn't have any profound oh well you should the people should hear you praying on the streets and, and yeah like no like it should just be part of who you are your 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 faith in god your reliance upon him um should be obvious in whatever manifestation that happens because we're each different we each live in different places we have different jobs um you know and D- dave and me live in the same town we work in different towns. We have very different jobs. I work at a bank. Dave is a police officer. So the way that our relationship with God will be made obvious is going to be different simply because the contexts and the people that we interact with are going to be very different. And it doesn't mean that one of us is a better Christian than the other or anything. It just it means that, that God is big enough and grand enough to be available in every situation that we might come across. Um, and so I just, it, to me, it's like, you know, and if, if you, you know, as we get further on to Matthew and Jesus is just harping on the Pharisees, like you're whitewashed tombs, everything on the outside looks great, but inside you're dead, you're rotting. Um, the, the obvious part of our relationship, we're, it has to be matched inside with what's outside you know you, you have to I should, I should, you have to you don't have to do anything you can, <laughs> you can choose what you want to do um but it just strikes me that the 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 more that i kind of try and take a bird's eye view to what god is communicating in scripture is just like be with me enjoy me be who i made you to be and just let that be enough and that's it shouldn't be hard, but it is. <laughs> it shouldn't be. But, you know, yeah. You eat ramen noodles long enough, you can convince yourself it's a gourmet meal, right? Yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. We choose... I, 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 we, we so often choose what is good instead of what is best. It's not even necessarily that what we're, we're pursuing or what we want is a, is a bad thing. You know, it's just we, and I don't even know that we settle. I think so often we choose it. We allow good things to crowd out what is best. And uh, I think that's um, very, very easy to do. We, um, you know, I, again, I, I, I'm thinking that we, we choose to... Um, so often we it's going back to what we were talking about in terms of um, having to do things to achieve things to be a success to do it the right way mm-hmm. and I don't I don't think um, it's such a conscious uh, thing as that as it is just an overflow that we are filled with the spirit we are tapping into God we're praying with him we're reading his word we're memorizing his word uh, we're um, seeking out those spiritual disciplines that uh, draw us nearer to Him, and because He is present in our life, uh, from those things that the overflow is is people seeing Him, and and I want to make it a, well I didn't cuss in this situation or I told the truth in this situation or 
you know, whatever, it, mm-hmm. whatever tangible thing it might be. Now, at the same time, I do think it can be a very tangible thing. Um, you know, my, my I, best friend since junior high is Ken. And uh, I think, um, I hope he was seeing God in me. And it was just interesting because there would be stressful times or something bad would happen. Uh, example would be um, a vehicle I was driving was damaged by another vehicle and just the people that we were with probably thought I should have pounded this guy and just beat him up and as I respond to the situation and and, and didn't make uh, a big deal about it and you know kind of brush it off as this is a material thing not a big deal um, Ken would always say things, or not always, I know there are times where he could see it to me because he'd say, Dave, are you praying? And it wasn't like I was on my knees with my <laughs> hands folded, but he, it was like he would look at me and see that there was something going on there. And uh, his, his way of articulating that was, Dave, are you praying? And I, I don't, I, I hope as I'm sharing that story, it's not a aha, look at me. I've had these moments But I'm sharing it because those were times for me where I had another person say something to me that they couldn't quite, they couldn't put their, you know, mind around or they couldn't articulate uh, what it was that they could see in me. And so he would just simply say, Dave, are you praying? And it almost kind of became a a running joke for for Ken and I. But um, by God's grace, I do believe those were moments that... I was reflecting Christ and Ken saw it and was like, this is the best I can do yeah. to kind of put a label on what it is that I'm seeing. So, um, you know, uh, one of the verse that, um, talking about, I don't know whether it's, we do something or we don't do something, uh, the fruits of the spirit, um, Proverbs 15, 23 um, a person finds joy in giving an apt reply, and how good is a timely word? And I think for me, this is probably one of those places where I don't do a very good job of reflecting Christ. And that's when uh, I'm at work, or even with my wife, whoever it may be, and we, we get on this. We're gonna, we're just gonna beat somebody up verbally. You know, we're just gonna bash them. We're gonna make ourselves good because. Ah, can you believe that they did this? And can you believe she said that? And, you know, um, those sorts of things. And I have a horrible, horrible habit of jumping in with that and piling on and maybe even embellishing the story that I'm sharing. (laughs) I'll I'll add to it. And it's not even the the total truth. When when really uh, an apt reply, a simple word can just be all the difference in the world. And uh, I think that comes again from... Um, being with him and just being able to do that in the right moment because uh, I am not good with a, an apt reply or a, or a good word. I'm, I'm always good for a sarcastic or clever <laughs> reply, not necessarily a wise one, unfortunately. Um, all right, just a few more questions before we uh, bid adieu uh, this episode. Um and I guess this question is a bit of a, um, well, the last two are a bit of a, a you know, concluding questions about what we've discussed so far. How can we avoid overcomplicating faith in God? And I want, like, some practical how, why, you know. Um, I think, um, I don't know. I, I Again, I, I am just... I'm really struck with how difficult this can be in in the culture that we live in. It is not uh, a natural thing uh, for anybody to do. Uh, I'm I, well. I'm assuming that, but I know I know for me uh, particularly, uh, it's not. Uh, I think um, one of the things that we can do to to not overcomplicate it is to realize that um, God is not directing every every step we take, every thing that we do. It's not, you know, should I turn left, should I turn right? And I think sometimes as Christians we do that. I think we want to know, 
okay, I'm, when I get up to, out of bed today, God, help me know which kind of clothes to wear and help me to, you know, always do the right thing. And so to, to not over uh, complicate it uh, is to enjoy him. And if we can, uh, it, it's to remember what it's like to be a child. And, you know, God says that we need to come to him with, with the heart of a child. Uh, you watch children playing. There's, when they're in that moment of just, I, I'm very fortunate to live in a neighborhood and in a part of our neighborhood where there's just a ton of kids that, that go out and play. And you can just see they are out there enjoying the moment. They're having fun. They're present with each other. And they're not overthinking it. Uh, they're not trying to decide, is this the right game that we should be playing? <laughs> you know, they're just playing. They are just doing that. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the ways for me in my walk with him that I've tried to not overcomplicate it is to not overthink everything. Is this the right thing or is this the, not the right thing? Because I, I believe that God gives us infinitely more freedom uh, than what, uh, than what, um, what we look at. Sometimes I think we are, are, are focused and want to make it more complicated in, in that aspect. Well, I think it's almost easier if we're like, God, give me a yeah, sign. Exactly. Cause then, well, if it goes wrong, it's his fault. <laughs> you, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and we can maybe get into the whole free will and predetermination thing later on <laughs> far 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 down the line um but and and so i think we focus on things that it's you know he tells us uh that he loves us you know um take you know john three sixteen, one of the most famous verses out there and literally just break it down piece by piece you know uh god so loved the world you can just focus on that part of the verse mm -hmm. and 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 just realize wow this isn't complicated he just loved us that much and uh does not want to see us uh die from our sin um so yeah i think i think you focus on those verses that talk about his love and the sacrifice that he made for us mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the term that comes to mind is, is taking what God says at face value. And that, that seems to, you know, like connotate, oh, don't think about it too hard or <laughs> don't don't dive deep into it, which is not what I'm trying to communicate, but really is like God says this. I created you in my image. I yeah. called you good. I sent, like, the, the very basics of the faith are not shallow. No. The, 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 the basics of what God has chosen to do and what God has said about us and for us are deep enough that we can spend our lifetime just being in awe about those things. And so I think, you know, to, to really kind of echo what you say, how do we avoid overcomplicating faith in God is, is read what he has said and, and don't try and manipulate it to fit your particular brand of I need to do this, that, and the other thing just so I can feel better about... No, like you said, God loved the world. So, he did something to save the world. God had, you know... And then when Jesus left, God gave us the Holy Spirit. And this is what the Holy Spirit does. And this is how God... Can, like, there is enough depth in the very fundamentals of what God has chosen to do for us and to us that we don't need to make it more complicated. We need to just kind of, uh, you know, is it John John fifteen like abide in me and I will abide. Just rest. Just be with God, and be okay with not doing ninety five things. Like <laughs> seriously, take ten minutes and just, and that's going to be really hard for a lot of people to sit for ten minutes and just either read their Bible or try and pray or just say, you know, what What do I know is true about God and what does that say about me? And just kind of resting there. Because your mind is, after about 30 seconds, going to be on last night's basketball game yeah. or the bills that you have to pay or who's picking up so-and-so from school tomorrow. Um, 
And so I think a way to over to to stop overcomplicating faith is is like you said, just kind of taking what God said at, at face value and just trying to understand how deep and meaningful and wonderful that is. Yeah, and if I, I just think if you really start looking at what the Bible says, I, I, without looking at it, there's there's maybe this underlying, overarching sort of just uh, there's a this huge list of don't do this and you got to do this and it's it's really not that complicated. So, uh, you know, I think of Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all you who are are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that is just a consistent throughout. It's mm-hmm. it's not a, it's when um, it's when we choose to not seek Him, uh, we're building golden you know calves to worship or uh, you know whatever it might be in our modern day of we're not seeking him. We've turned our back from him. We are not uh, in a relationship with him. We're not yoked to him. And uh, it's not a list of do's or don'ts. It truly is that relationship that, uh, you know, that would be another thing is think about good relationships that you have. And, uh, you know, hopefully we all have those relationships. And I'm not saying in marriage, you don't have to work at things. Uh, because, you know, again, anything worth doing is worth some effort. But um, I find that my desire to work in my relationship with my wife is because I love her. And it's, you know, th- those sorts of things. There isn't this, uh, I don't do them because my wife is going to, you know, punish me or, you know, whatever it may be. It's because I care for her and I want to do things that make her happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, hopefully we all have those sorts of relationships that we can kind of compare that to and go, okay, I've got this best friend that I don't have to work at it. Well, I have to work at it, but I work at it because of love and, mm-hmm. you know, that sort of a thing. All right, I guess our last question, <laughs> and this might serve as a, as a good wrap-up perhaps. Uh, what does it mean to let our light shine? As it says there at the end, it says, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. One of the things that has, uh, just even since I was a little kid, that has fascinated me is the fact that light will always overcome darkness. You know, you have a completely dark room. um, You can strike a match and it'll, you know, it'll present light. And it will light up that room. Even a a small light will do that. There's nothing... uh, I can't add more darkness to uh, snuff out the light. That's not a physical possibility. What are the ways that I can can do that? Well, it's by um, either adding distance. If I get far enough away from that light, it becomes so far that I can't see it. Or like in this, putting a bushel over it, putting putting it under something, and uh, to me, that's um, if 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 you've got God in your life, even a tiny little bit of light is going to overcome the darkness. Mm-hmm. And the only way that it's not going to shine is one if we're we're choosing to put distance between ourselves and God to the point where that light doesn't shine. Or we're allowing there to be something between us and him, uh, or we're choosing not to, to seek him. And so, um, I'm going to go back to the. I don't think there's a whole lot we have to do beyond being with him, spending time with him, and knowing him, because the natural thing will be is that our light will shine. Yeah, it's. Even in like writing that question, what does it mean to let it? There was like a, a, um, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Um, inherent, like, what do I have to do yeah. in order to let my, you know? And that's what I wanted my answer to be. I yeah. wanted to go, <laughs> I want to give a list of, well, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. And I suppose there is it, you got to do that. 
you, you've got to be with him. Mm-hmm. You know, so there is that uh, to, in, you know, honor God and to enjoy him. And Yeah, and there we'll, we'll link um, to an article from the Relevant Magazine, which is surprisingly actually very helpful. I was quite surprised and delighted. Uh, delighted to read it and it's uh the title is something along the lines of christianity is more than just being a good person and and they get to this idea that sharing the gospel or being a light in in um being you know the city in the hill or the salt of this whatever you know metaphor you want to use is more than just doing good things or saying good things there there has to be a mixture of word and deed to you know, because there are plenty of people that are not Christians that do wonderful things on the planet, that serve, that try and cure diseases, that feed the hungry, that, that do the things that the church is called to do. And they do these things and they're not Christians. So just by doing these good things, people aren't going to go, oh, I bet you're a Christian. No, there are plenty of people that do Red Cross and all of the other wonderful organizations that, that try to bring water and food and, and um, help to abused women and children that, that are not Christians and are, are not doing it because God tells them to do it or because they want to they're doing it because they see a need and for whatever reason they're you know they're not christians they still see value in human life um and the other side of the argument is oh well there are plenty of non-christians that are nice and say good things and and so the call that that christ has given us you know when he says go forth and make disciples of all nations teaching tell teaching them what i've told you and baptizing them is like go do and speak be the salt of the earth, be the city on the hill, be the, the light that's not hidden. Combine those words and deeds in the ways that I have taught you so where it's undeniable that they will say, okay, this person must be a Christian. Or, at worst, this person is different. I must know what makes them that way. Um, so that's a good article we'll link to. And then, and then of course, every time I read this passage of scripture, I'm reminded of the classic newsboy song, Shine. <laughs> and that freaky music video will be in the show notes as well, just for your entertainment. Um, but unless you've got anything else that you want to throw in last second, I think I do not. I am always amazed at how quickly this time goes by and <laughs> uh, yeah, we're uh, how, be... how, how easily it is to ramble <laughs> for almost an hour. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I think we've, we've hopefully, uh, kind of shared our, our thoughts and our heart with, with really what we think about this this part of scripture in jesus but we just encourage you to take time this week to reflect on what it would mean to glorify god and enjoy him what what does that what does that mean what does that look like how can you show god glory um and just really try and focus on that this week um but thank you so much for listening you have made it through almost a full hour of the podcast that is incredible um we thank you so much uh we'd love to hear from you um the quickest easiest way to do that is on twitter that's at masterclass fm or if you got more than 140 characters worth of stuff to say we'd love to get an email from you at masterclass fm at gmail.com uh, you can find all the show notes for this episode including all the links and um scripture that we have talked about this uh this episode at masterclass fm.com slash masterclass slash four as this is episode four uh, or in the podcast app that you used to listen to, most of them will have show notes available as well. Uh, and last but not least, if you like what we're doing here, um, we would really, 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 really appreciate it if you left the rating on iTunes. Uh, this will help other people um, who have no idea who we are or what we're doing or anything like that. They'll help, it'll help them find us um, and help grow our community. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want to be able to reach new people. Um, and hopefully share a bit of what, what God has in store for them. Um, so we would be really appreciative if you would take the time to do that. You can just go to iTunes, go to the podcast section, find our podcast, and then leave a little rating or a review if you've got the time to do that. We would be super thankful for that. Um, and if you want to help support the development of this podcast, the Masterclass, in a different way, you can always donate a buck or two at masterclassfm.com. donate Every little bit helps um we've got some ideas of what we'd like to do but that really is up to you guys so thank you so much again for listening have a wonderful 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 day evening afternoon midnight wherever you happen to be when you listen to this Um, we'll be back in a couple weeks 
with a new episode. Dave, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Yes, thank you, Cam. Appreciate all the hard work that you do into making this happen. So thanks. Not a problem. Everyone take care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Shine, may wonder what you got.